Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Eun Siu Kang. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Riceville United Methodist Church. It is my great joy to welcome you to our worship service at The Vine, an online campus of Riceville United Methodist Church. Easter is here. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Were you searching tombs and memories for Jesus Christ, who was the one who was crucified? If so, today open your eyes to wonder. Our God is full of surprises. So our prayer is, through today's worship service, you will encounter the great and merciful God and experience the living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, Take a deep breath and feel closer to our Lord. Let us go before God through the affirmation of faith. The words will be shown on your screen. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who works in the hidden stillness of every dawn, who beckons us to visit the tomb of our fears so that we might discover the birth of hope. We believe in Jesus, the risen Christ, who has come to reconcile and make new, who meets us on every path, who greets us with respect, names and calms our fears, and bids us to walk and talk as children of the light. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who works through the wrinkled and the newborn, the hurting and the hopeful, who nudges our prayers kindles our longings and prompts our praise. We believe we are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect for creation, to love and to serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Now, please join me in our prayer. Let us pray. O God of Easter joy, we come this morning with glad shout of acclamation. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May this time of worship help us to truly and fully experience this risen Christ. O oh God, thank you for calling us your Easter people. Be with us this day. May the light of your love flood into our lives and through us to all of those who have been captured by darkness. That the light may give them healing freedom, and hope. As we witness the surprise of the women at the tomb, the appearance of the Savior to Mary, and her good news brought to the disciples, we remember that this good news exists for us today. Darkness does not win. Death is not victorious. Christ is risen. We are raised with Christ to a new life of hope and service. May the joy of this good news swirl around in our heart. May excitement for service and ministry burst forth from us. May we truly be the Easter people that you have called us to be. O God of mercy, we ask your peace and grace we have offered prayers for family and friends, 
for situations near and far. We have asked for your help, healing and blessing. Now, we lift up in prayer those who are in need of your merciful touch. So we pray for those whom we name with our voices or hold in our heart. Lord, hear our prayers. Let them know that you are with them on their journey. Pour your living hope into their steps. We humbly offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now take a moment to offer our heart and gift. As we respond to God's generosity and grace, you can contribute to the ministry of Riceville United Methodist Church through our website and by mail. Let us continue to worship our God. I'm Pastor Eun Seo. I'm so excited to share this time with you. Today is, yes, Easter. Today is Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Mm, do you like Easter? Oh, I love Easter. What are some of the things that you get to do during Easter? Well, a lot of people might do an Easter egg hunt or have an Easter basket with eggs, right? Or maybe decorate eggs or making Easter egg. So today I actually have some eggs here. Can you see this? Yes. And this is just a regular eggs. And I'm wondering, do you know what's inside of this regular eggs? Well, yeah, absolutely. One of the fun Easter eggs has candy inside of that, but just inside of these regular eggs. Well, I bet some of you know that, but maybe some of you don't know. So let's see what's inside of that. Um, so I'm going to pick one and I'm going to break this. So when you break one, Yeah, wow, what's inside this? Can you see this one? Yeah, just like I know you and some of you guys know that. Here is what you call yolk. This is um, the kind of the bright yellow one. Um, this is the yolk. And every time you crack an egg, you can see what's going to be inside of this, this yellow one. You know, let's do another one. Let us try one more time. Um, I'm going to pick another egg. And... Oh! Oh! Can you see this? Wow! There's nothing! There's nothing here! Wow! It is so surprising! Surprising. Well, you know, on the first Easter, some women went to the tomb where they were expecting to see Jesus because, well, what's inside of tomb, there is always a dead body there. But when they got there, they were surprised because Jesus was not inside of tomb. 
There was nothing. There was empty, just like where we were surprised when we broke this egg, and there was nothing. Do you know why it was empty? It was empty because Jesus rose from the dead and walked out of that. Jesus is alive, and He is still alive here today with us. So this Easter, every time you see an egg, I hope you remember the surprise of not having anything inside of an egg, and the much more important surprise of the empty tomb that means. Jesus is risen. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for your gift. Thank you so much for giving your Son Jesus Christ, and thank you so much for the gift of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Help us to remember that. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Good morning. I'm Doug Lane, senior pastor at Wrightsville United Methodist Church. And today we've uh, come outside for Easter Sunday morning. We're at a very special place, uh, both for me personally and perhaps for you as well. At least it's a special place for the people of Wilmington. We're at the Heritage Garden at the Lower Cape Fear Life Care Center, or what's more commonly known as the Hospice Center of Wilmington. Obviously, this is a place where many people come to die. And I have prayed with dozens and dozens of families from our church as they watch their loved one transition from this life to the life of eternity. And so we remember on this special day that life goes on beyond the grave. And we recognize that this is possible because of Jesus Christ. So let's turn in our scripture reading for today and hear the most marvelous story ever told, the story of Jesus' resurrection. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, beginning in verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where have you laid him, and I'll take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, Lord, you make all things new. Lord, help us to remember today the miracle of the resurrection and the promise of resurrection for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. 
The story goes that an atheist was spending a quiet day fishing on a pretty lake in Scotland when suddenly his boat was attacked by the Loch Ness Monster. In one easy flip, the beast tossed the boat high into the air and opened its mouth to swallow the boat and the man. As the man sailed head over heels, he cried out, Oh God, help me! And suddenly, the ferocious attack scene just froze in place. And as the atheist hung in midair, a booming voice came down from the cloud saying, I thought you didn't believe in me. The man pleaded, come on God, a minute ago I didn't believe in the Loch Ness Monster either. Easter is the moment of belief for Christians. It is real. It happened. Jesus came back to life for Mary Magdalene, for the disciples, and for us. But we still have to ask the question, why is Easter so special? Why is it that more than two billion people around the world celebrate this day every year? Why the big deal? Well, because the resurrection of Jesus Christ showed that Jesus was really indeed the Son of God. And yet even that fact raises a key question in today's modern society. Okay, Jesus is alive, so what? One of the 12 disciples, the Apostle Peter, gives us the answer in his letter that we know as 1 Peter, found in chapter 1, verse 3, where he read, wrote, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I'd like to use this guiding verse from 1 Peter to help us understand the significance of Easter for all of Jesus' disciples in the past, present, and future. Let's read it again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The first phrase I want you to understand and come to believe is what makes Easter so special is this phrase, by His great mercy. When I taught confirmation classes in the past, I would explain the difference between justice and mercy to the kids in the class. Justice is getting what you deserve. If you did something good, you should be rewarded. If you did something bad, you should be punished. But mercy is not receiving the punishment that you deserve. I learned this lesson literally at church. When I was about 12 years old, my friend and I skipped Sunday school one day and walked down the street to the Krispy Kreme donut shop. We bought a couple of those delicious chocolate-covered cream-filled bites of heaven and then walked back to church to sit with our parents for worship. We were walking up the steps into the sanctuary, nervous that we might get caught, when all of a sudden we ran into none other than our Sunday school teacher. He looked us in the eyes and he said, boys, I won't tell your parents you skipped Sunday school if you promise never to do it again. That, my friends, was mercy. How many times in my life did I do something stupid or daring or just plain wrong and didn't have to pay any consequences for my actions? Well, that's God's mercy. St. Peter is reminding us today that while the wages of sin might be death, due to God's great mercy, that's not going to be the consequence of our actions. So I want you to say with, with me out loud, thank God for his great mercy. Okay? Will you say that with me? Thank God for his great mercy. His great mercy provides us with a new birth. This is the next phrase I want us to understand. This phrase, new birth, reminds me of the exchange that Nicodemus has with Jesus in the Gospel of John, chapter 3. Jesus tells the Pharisee he must be born from above, and Nicodemus asks in return, How can someone be born after having grown old? Can one enter into their mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus tells them no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born by water and the Spirit. Jesus is explaining that the new birth is very different from our original birth. In our original birth, we're born of flesh and blood and human will into an earthly life that we see, hear, smell, taste, and touch. But Jesus is talking about a spiritual birth, not into this earthly life, but rather into an eternal life with God. 
This doesn't start at the minute our earthly life ends, but rather at the moment we choose to accept our eternal life. Yes, it is a choice given to us by God's great mercy. Jesus makes this plain to Nicodemus when he famously says in verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That's proof of God's great mercy. Now here comes the choice part. So that whosoever shall believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. New birth is your choice, and it means everlasting life. So say it with me. New birth means everlasting life. Ready? New birth means everlasting life. Our next phrase is living hope. Now this is no ordinary hope that we have, such as I hope to win the lottery, or I hope to make this 80 foot putt, or I hope to get a date with Miss America. That's just wishful thinking. I'm reminded of the second grade teacher who asked her class, what's the definition of hope? And one little boy said, hope is wishing for something you know ain't gonna happen. Well, we're talking about a living hope that never dies and will certainly happen. We're told that because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have the most prized possession in the world, hope. The resurrection proves that our hope is real. If life can come after death, then we now have the promise that God can make something good happen even after something tragic. Someone has observed you can live 40 days without food, eight days without water, four minutes without air, but not one second without hope. Easter gives us hope. A living hope is a hope to live on. Norman Cousins was a diplomat under three presidential administrations, and he's been described as a global peacemaker, even winning the United Nations Peace Medal. He thought a lot about hope during more than one serious illness that he suffered from. He said that if you have hope, you make plans. Hope points people toward what life can be, despite the uncertainties, disabilities, or suffering of the present. Hope propels us forward in life, even if we have to advance on crutches or a walker or a wheelchair. Christian hope knows pain and suffering, the tragedy and injustice in the world, but Christian hope keeps people trying again and again and again. Hope leaps forward in risk. It strains forward into tomorrow, despite the chance of failure. All kinds of things in this world try to smash our hopes, but Christian hope isn't a natural hopefulness just because business is going well, as if our families are healthy and our country's not at war. Well, neither Christian faith nor Christian hope is automatic. It's tough to hope, especially when facing our death or a loved one's death. You see, the New Testament it doesn't deny death. But it doesn't stop with death either. Because of the resurrection, we know life goes beyond death. Christ's resurrection is what happened at Easter. So let's say out loud, Easter gives me hope. Ready? Easter gives me hope. And that leaves us with the last word, resurrection. Now I'm being a little punny here. You see, Jesus has the last word over sin and death by coming back from the grave. Nothing can hold Jesus back. And you can have the same resurrection power by choosing to believe in him. But resurrection isn't a word we use much outside of church, so I want to be sure we all understand. It's not the same as resuscitation. Resuscitation means to come back to the life you had. Resurrection means putting on something new. It means a life transformed. You see, Jesus Christ can do for you what nothing else or no one else can. He can not only change you personally, he can change you eternally. He can change your habits, he can heal your hurts, he can help you overcome your hangups. He can give you power to let go of your guilt, your grief, and your grudges. Only he can give you the power to stop doing what you shouldn't do and to start doing what you should. You wanna hear something even more incredible? The power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead is available to anyone who believes in him. Ephesians 1 says, I pray that you'll begin to understand the incredible greatness of his power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power 
that raised Christ from the dead. You see, once you give your life to the person of the resurrection, then you receive the power of the resurrection. That's why Paul says in Philippians 3, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The resurrection tells us that life goes on beyond death. Therefore, nothing should hold us back from doing God's will in this world. So my last phrase for you to share out loud is this. The resurrection means anything's possible. Ready? The resurrection means anything's possible. Peter, of course, was writing to first century Christians who weren't rich, weren't powerful, and weren't very many in number. While it's hard to know for sure, it's likely that there are more Christians in Wilmington today than there were in all the world when Peter was writing this letter. But those early Christians possessed something amazing. They knew that by God's great mercy, they'd been given a choice to receive a new birth. And that new birth gave them access to the power of the resurrection. And with that power, they demonstrated a living hope every day. Jesus' resurrection changed them and they in turn changed the world. Are you open to God changing you this Easter? Changing your mind? Changing your values? Changing your behavior? Changing your hope so that you can help change the world for Jesus Christ? When I meet old friends in ministry, I often ask them, what's new at your church? What's God doing right now where you are? See, Christian hope isn't about keeping the world the way it is or the way we thought it was or should have been, but instead, it's about making things better. Jesus does this by making us better. That's what Jesus strains toward and hopes for. And we won't get everything done here. We won't make life perfect, but if we hope, we'll keep trying. For hope is active. It makes plans. Hope Hope buys green bananas. This world isn't always a beautiful or hopeful place. I get that. We'd be liars if we said it was, either in the past or in the present. But the New Testament proclaims the eternal good news that God has come here in the past, that he's helping us in the present, and he awaits us in the future. So what will we do with the choice that God gives us? Will we accept the new birth that God offers us through Jesus? Will we let God's Holy Spirit increase our hope? Will we live as people of the world who constantly look backward? Or will we live as people of the resurrection who use this new birth to constantly reach into the future? I invite Christ to live in you this Easter so that you might share his living hope with the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, you give us hope by making possible the resurrection. You did it through Jesus and you've done it through millions of people since. We have so many loved ones whose lives continue in your care. And Lord, we ask that you will continue to give us hope, knowing that our lives are with you in eternity starting even now, so that we might make life on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, help us to make the choice of receiving your great mercy, being born anew, so that we might share a living hope through the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.
we've come to you today from the very center of the Heritage Garden at Lower Cape Fear Life Care Center. And here at the center is a prayer labyrinth. Now the prayer labyrinth is an ancient tool that people use uh, for prayer. As you walk in, uh, you uh, think about your anxieties, your worries, your concerns, and as you walk out, you let God release those things that are all bottled up inside of you, everything that you're concerned about and worried about. You see, the resurrection makes anything possible. And so as Christians, we're able to move forward with a living hope that is only possible through faith in Jesus Christ. So this Easter, keep the faith and keep the hope. Amen.